but just to let people know, this is a 24 hour race in a five mile loop with 21 obstacles during each five mile loop. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is, what are you guys, crazy? <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but you have to have a little bit of a screw loose to look at something and be like, oh, a tough mutter, great. Oh, I'm gonna do that on repeat for 24 hours. And everyone out there is like, yeah, that's fun. Like, yeah. sign me up. Yeah, to, to me it was just like, what's the biggest, hardest challenge out there? And, and, and I saw it and said, okay, yeah, that sounds cool. Well, this has been around for about, about five years, these kinds of races. Amelia, you've racked up 30 victories, 50 podiums. So I think we're talking to the experts here. Um, I think they were started, because I've done a couple of them, and I've seen this incredible teamwork, even though there is an aspect of individual racing mm -hmm. as a part of this. Talk to us about the teamwork that you see out there and that you need, because a lot of these obstacles you can't do by yourself. Unless you're Ryan, but. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no, it's really cool because um, they design a lot of the obstacles so that you can't really accomplish them on your own. And so it really creates an awesome community and everyone kind of coming towards the obstacle and helping each other and getting over it. And yeah, it's super fun and it adds a whole nother dynamic to the event. I've always had people look at me like I'm a little crazy being a boxer. <laughs> right. you know, like, even, even besides the fact that my father is Muhammad Ali, they're like, why do you want to box for a living? I'm like, you got to be a little different. Don't even try to understand. So I, you know, I'm here with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> but I know that it's physically and mentally challenging. And it's the mental aspect that I'm wondering. Like after you go around so many times and you're nowhere, you've only 10 hours in, <laughs> you got 24 hours to go. I'm like, wow, you know, what have you learned about yourself mentally? Yeah. I think I always say that, you know, the first half of the race, so the first 12 hours is completely physical, and then this back half is all mental. Um, and I think you really realize, like, how deep you can push. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes your body is going to give out, but as long as your mind is thinking, I mean, we're capable of so many incredible things. And I think that that's such a journey that so many people recognize during World's Toughest Mudder, and that's what's been so cool about that event is that no one ever thought that they could be out there running and competing for 24 hours and they push themselves and they're able to do it. Yeah, I mean, in the race, it's not a factor of uh, if it's gonna get really hard, it's kind of like when it's right. gonna get right. hard and how hard is it gonna get. But for me, what I've uh, kind of come to realize oh is that God. if you can <laughs> run through the desert and over obstacles for 24 hours, then it seems to make like anything else you encounter in life a lot easier and a lot more doable. <laughs> That's what Pac has done for me, right. I would think, yeah. yeah. And then it makes the finish line that much better. I mean, I haven't done yeah. anything like you've done, but I have dabbled in these mud races. Um, the one I did, I, the very first obstacle, I fell and broke my rib. Ooh. And I didn't know, but I'm like, I, I'm pretty certain I broke my rib. Right. But then I just, I had to finish it. And so this is me at the finish with my broken rib. And then the adrenaline wears off, right? That excitement of crossing mm -hmm. the finish line and the pain sets in. Have there, has there ever been a time when you just thought, I can't do it, I can't go on? I mean, you said you broke your tailbone <laughs> 15 miles, miles into one of these. Yeah, um, but it's interesting because the adrenaline will take you so far is that you won't realize the pain that you're going through. But I think there are everyone, I know I've hit really low points during these races where you're just, you don't think that there's gonna be another lap, yeah. that you're gonna get through those next five miles. And then an hour later, you feel on top of the world. So it's riding out these ebbs and mm -hmm. flows over such a long distance. What's your favorite obstacle? Ooh, I think the cliff jump was probably my favorite. It's a 35 <laughs> foot cliff jump, you guys. Into, it was into Lake Las Vegas, right? Yeah. At night. It didn't even open until midnight, I heard. Yeah. It's actually easier to <laughs> jump at night because you can't really see below. Yeah. If, you, if you jump during the day, you see everyone, you or see you it. see how I high up it is. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it was the one where you get shocked. You know, oh. you jump the little hole. You might get shocked if you I don't, decide standing in water. I don't you know? think anyone enjoys that. <laughs> if yeah. people enjoy that, then they're... you got they're more than a screw loose. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have to say, I wish you good luck. I wish you good health. And we can't wait to watch the actual competition, which we all will get a chance to. You can catch Road to World's Toughest Mudder Thursday at 9 Eastern on CBS Sports Network and World's Toughest Mudder on Christmas Day, followed by World's Toughest After Show, hosted by Amelia, who's sitting right here. And that's on CBS Sports Network.